spending a day trying to use gnome. Yeah. And being mad the entire time. Hey everybody, welcome back to another weekly Daily Wednesdays. We're going to sit back, we're going to relax, we're going to talk about some of the things going on in the world of Linux. I even saw last night that uh, I couldn't make heads or tails. I, I went reading about it. Apparently, allegedly, the board of Suzy like, got in contact, allegedly. Mm -hmm. I, I was like trying to reason this, because this dude like, shows up in the forums, and he's like, I can't tell you who I heard it from, but the, they're going to ask us to change our name, or yeah. it doesn't have Suzy in it. And I read through the whole thing, and the guy like never drops names, so let's see how that plays out. But this week, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about the Cosmic Pre-Post-Pre-Alpha, which is not a name I came up with for <laughs> once, and... DU with style. That's what the yeah. show title is called because I'm going to show it off. I was really happy about it. I'll tell you why you, you might find it interesting. New version of the Linux kernel. And of course, a very much anticipated release of Open Broadcaster Studio. I'll tell you all about it. But first, what's going on, Jill? You uh, spent like four days at a wedding with nerds <laughs> rolling yes. dice and uh, what Aww. else? So um, I had, you know, a wonderful trip to Disneyland on Thursday for a friend's wedding. And in fact, I can say who it is. It was a uh, Linux Chicks LA member and one of my best friends, Nicole Ciceris. She got married to Owen. And it was a wonderful, geeky wedding. But what was so awesome is in their vows, uh, they actually rolled a six-sided dice <laughs> in their vows because they... They all, they both play D&D, &D, and that was really fun. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Yeah. Probably more entertaining than um, my experience. We were talking in the pre-show. Go back and listen to that if you want to, if you're a patron. Dealing with the GNOME desktop, because I'm working on a Fedora project right now. That means that the test bench has Fedora on it. And by the test bench, if you keep track of how I do, that means the test bench is in the middle of the floor again in the studio, <laughs> because yeah. that makes me finish a project because it drives me insane with it yeah, sitting there. I can see it right now. <laughs> I, I can walk around it, but I'm like, why are you then there? <laughs> but we're going to get that done. Good news, though. We talked about it last week. I was kind of excited, I guess I should say. I did the um, little audio science uh, broadcast audio on Linux. Oh, I'm yeah. like, hey, well, let's put that out. And I think no one's going to be interested in this, but I was. So, you know, I did a write-up on it, put it on Interfacing Linux, and posted a YouTube video. I'm like, two, three hundred people might watch it eventually, and I don't blame them. And they did for the first two days. Now it just clocked over 10,000. That's pretty nice to see um, like that many people were interested in, you know, some older hardware on Linux. A lot of great comments going on there. A lot of new subscribers. So for everybody who watched the video, shared the mm -hmm. video on the Interfacing Linux YouTube channel. Thank you. That was, uh, you know, always a feel good. You're like, oh, people are interested in that. So naturally, the next thing I'm working on, no one's going to find interesting at all because that's how I do stuff. Um, let's go ahead and just hop into it, though. Okay. With something <laughs> from System76. Yeah. So this is one of the Linux community's most anticipated desktop managers ever. The upcoming in-house built Rust-based Cosmic Desktop for System 76's Pop OS and other distros. And these are the current updates for the Cosmic Alpha. First, as you noticed, uh, Ven scrolled on the screen, the beautiful new Cosmic logo that was just released just a few weeks ago. And I was really impressed by it. I loved it. Gosh, there's been so much work done. They have completed work on customizing the keyboard shortcuts and for switching windows using super tab or alt tab has been implemented. Also in the display settings panel, display mirroring has been activated. So you can use multiple monitors to display the same image. I know they were working on that for quite some time. And lots of gaming bugs have been resolved, including games locking up when minimized, very important to fix that bug and better performance for compositor multi-threading for tasks like, you know, supporting high refresh rates on monitors and multiple monitors. This new version of 
of the cosmic desktop in Rust. Look at all the work people are doing. This is just awesome. And you know, you make sure to check our show notes for the System76 Cosmic blog updates to read about all the other contributions from third-party contributors and more Cosmic Alpha updates. I was reading through it and I was taking a look at it and, you know, a lot of contributions. And one that kind of struck me was BQ wrong way, an ambient noise applet. Like, oh, all right. It's been inspired by Blanket, which I didn't know what Blanket was. And I, oh, technically, oh, wow, look at that. They didn't want you to know either. What do we think about this? Uh, cosmic noise, because it, to me, sounds like you reinvented a fan. Well, you know, white noise. <laughs> you need be... the background noise. Uh, yeah. I, I, be... I have multiple background noise generators yeah. sitting around the house. They're called fans. <laughs> I do like background noise, and that's probably something, you yeah. know, people want. In a desktop, that's something I would never think to yeah. put in there. But I'm like, yeah, because I nothing bugs me more than just dead silence. I'm like, mm -hmm. it just drives the paranoia. I'm like, something's coming to get me. It's not, but my brain yeah. thinks it is. Put on a little background. You know, this is why I put like on a Twitch stream or something. There's always a little bit of background noise, so it's good to have something like that yeah. going on. Good Absolutely. work, everybody at System76. And you know, I was looking at this and I was thinking about it. I was having traumatic flashbacks of uh, yesterday of spending a day trying to use GNOME. Yeah. And being mad the entire time I was trying to use it. <laughs> now, I want to talk to everybody about do. Have you ever used that command? You ever just oh, typed yeah. it into a terminal? And you're like, <laughs> oh, that, that's pretty cool. And, you know, you might want to give it a try. In fact, you know, I've set up a little demo here. Let's take a look. Okay. We're going to type in do. Hey, look at that. There's files with, uh, no, we are in my Sweet. DaVinci Resolve drive, which has uh, all the video work that I do, but okay, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. And maybe it doesn't, because it's not something you typically break out, but why would you normally break that out? And of course, there's a human readable flag on that. Maybe we should show that off too, just to, yeah. a, a fair comparison <laughs> here. So if we do D-U-H. That's a little bit better, isn't it? You yes. know, G for gugs, M for <laughs> mugs, and uh, yeah, look at that. And zero for zeros, but you know, it's just kind of going through that it gets into the goblet goop, and you're like, oh no. Now, why would you run this in the first place? Ah, common problem, common question, and mm -hmm. uh, easy solution to it. It's what's taking up all my drive space. Yes. You look at your available yeah. space. Usually you don't even run out. You just happen to like glance over and you're like, why am I missing all that? And I've been there. I've been there. Last time I did it, it was an X11 error lock that had grown to like 100 mm. gigs. Oh, yeah. That happens. <laughs> like what? How? And I, I finally just got it. So there is one problem with DU. Sadly, it's not written in Rust. <laughs> we can't have that in 2024, can we? No. And no. Um, <laughs> but that's why I want to talk about this, because that is one of the things Dust fixes. DU plus Rust, like do, but more intuitive. And look at it. There's a nice little demo. Yeah. It's got some squiggly lines on it, but it's a handy visual overhaul. I like something that's practical in a terminal, not something that you're going to download and do in the terminal once and be like, oh, that was cool. Never use it again. This makes sense. Three shades of gray. And a white line of nothing but fullness. Think of it as like GNOME Disk Usage Analyzer without all the extra steps. It's right there. You're already in the terminal. Like, I need to take a peek. And mm -hmm. it's quick. It's to the point and visually easy to understand. And it'll help you track down that 100 gigabyte log file just to show you. We've looked at that. That's human readable DU, right? Yeah. Now we're going to yeah, go I'm into best. dust. Yeah, then like, okay, I know what's going on. And you see all my little tiny single video image recordings at 20 gigs and 100 gigs. And, but it shows yeah. you your directory <laughs> structure. It's got, you know, color coded and it follows it down. I'm like, what's what? Once taken up the space. And there's plenty of flags to play around with. Yeah. You remember using it a few years back. Now I should put it. Oh, ab it's absolutely. been around for a couple of years, yeah. like yeah, one of them. I just remember, um, 
how convenient it was to visually see how much disk space you know a folder takes up. So recently, I have I have a list of of applications that I have to install when I when I um, install a new distro, and I put Dustin on there so I'd have it, <laughs> so I'd always remember it. And um, the 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 flag that I like to use was Dust um, Tac F capital F, which shows you only files, so you can find the largest file on, on your drive, and that was really convenient because mm. I did have a lot of big files on my drive, and it was nice to just use just to see those. And I found then that one of the biggest one was actually the Windows executable for Wine. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so that's what's taking like 50 gigs. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about mm -hmm. Kernel 610. And Joe's going to yeah. tell you a lot about gaming updates. Yeah. And laptop well, updates. Gaming related hardware. Yeah. Gaming desktop. related. Absolutely. So Linus Torvalds released Linux kernel 6.10, and it includes lots of new hardware updates and support for current hardware, as well as future hardware. This includes su support for newer AMD GPUs on the RISC-V platform. Very cool. As well as for the upcoming AMD Zen 5 processors initial perf tool event support, and for the upcoming Intel Battlemage GPUs, there is now audio support via the HDMI interface. Very important. <laughs> also, Rust support for the RISC-V architecture. But there are also improvements to current hardware that many people in the Linux community are using that is very exciting, including the ASUS Republic of Gamers 2024 series of laptops now have working sound in Linux. And on the Pro model of the Microsoft Surface, the Linux driver adds fan profile switching and thermal sensor reporting. And, you know, read the link in our show notes for all the details. There's lots more hardware enablement <laughs> available. And it was a very exciting release. There was only one thing of note the entire release. <laughs> Just one. Just thing. one. The rest of it's fluff. It's <laughs> trivial. Like, oh, that's cute. Have your toys. <laughs> Why? Because there's improved firewire support. Oh, that's very good, Ben. Yes. 1394, that dead technology that I keep harping on for people <laughs> looking to get incredible deals on audio interfaces. Yes. <laughs> like, well, it's going away. It's dead tech. It's old. I'm like, you don't understand how audio technology moves, son. Mm -hmm. You don't. Uh, compare the specs. They're the same as they were 20 years ago. But marketing told me different, Ben. I'm like, that's cool, Billy. Uh, mm -hmm. those in the know or in the know let's talk about obs yeah got a new release i was very excited i talked about it on saturday because uh twitch on their x account tweeted out it's here everybody the new thing <laughs> that they've been working on i'm like this is gonna be great it's awesome and it's like the restream thing right so maybe you don't know about that it's a very convoluted Rube Goldberg mechanism where it's got to automatically like determine your system information and stuff. Send that to uh, Twitch and get a configuration. You're going to be able to do multiple encoded streams, but you're going to be able to use AV1 and send it along with. Uh, and so it's going to eat up your bandwidth. And of course, doing those multi streams, it's going to slow down your PC. But it's cool. It'll it'll just work. Don't worry about it. You know, they, they sent that out. And they did the tweet, and like immediately after that, they went. Oops, our bad. We didn't mean to tweet that because it wasn't ready yet, but it is now. 30.2. And I was like, yes, let's go play. Oh, wait. Need an NVIDIA card and a copy of Windows. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. I know. Come on. I, I, I wanted to uh, play around with this. Uh, the multi track video streaming, so enhanced broadcasting. They do say, though, that other operating systems are in the works. So maybe yes. we'll see it eventually. I'm I'm sure we will. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, just give me an AV1 and just like YouTube does, and I'd be much happier. That's not the only thing to get excited about, though. We do have hybrid MP4, so that's yeah. going to allow you. You get that big warning, scary message if you try to record an MP, MP4. It's like, ah, if something happens, this file will be destroyed, and it's not mm -hmm. wrong. But the hybrid mm -hmm. option allows you to recover from the video if you have a power outage or something gets corrupted. You can still get to all of your 
data bits, you know, at least what you had recorded. NV encode is here for AV1. That's awesome. And it's on Linux. But a really important thing is zero copy for NV encode, which is the dedicated hardware inside of your NVIDIA card to do the almost cost free encoding for your games. So you're not taking a performance hit while you're streaming. But and you're like, but AMD, and I'm like, don't worry. It also works with QuickSync and Vapi. Ah, you don't have to worry about it because previously, check out this Rube Goldberg thing that was going on. The old way, it copied the rendered frames back to the system RAM, then copied them again to the FFmpeg AV frame. But it wasn't done yet, and it made FFmpeg upload them back to the GPU. Oh boy! As you imagine, that's a bit of overhead <laughs> and took a little bit of time. So we effectively can say we have gem and v encode for those in the know working on linux as was done in that the one time i was featured in a linus tech tips video oh yeah was me saying <laughs> it doesn't work on linux you can tell us a little bit more about the hybrid mp4s and i'll, I'll give you a fun follow-up to that yeah cool so yeah the hybrid mp4 output format you know was added which ven was talking about which allows you to recover the video if you have a power outage or a system failure uh, previously, this could only be achieved if you use the Matroska.mkv video format, which that, that is the one I would recommend uh, people using on OBS for that reason. You know, the video will be saved up to the point of the power outage, so you wouldn't lose the video or it wouldn't get corrupted. And also, the hybrid MP4 supports chapter markers via a hotkey or an API, which you can use in professional video editors like DaVinci Resolve. So this is a win-win all around. The hybrid MP4 sounds fantastic. And since so many people are using it on OBS, this is a very uh, needed feature. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> One of the fascinating things, um, I've been playing around with hybrid MP4s um, for a couple of months. Yeah. Because um, I've been running the nightlies and I saw it show up and I'm like, all right, that, that that's cool. Um, I wouldn't mind trying that. I record in the move container just because everything, everything I got in here is on battery backup. You know, I yeah, yeah power outage. I got time to stop what I'm doing and save it. Some of people just don't have that setup, and I completely understand. But I was like, all right, well, let's try this out. I put it in DaVinci Resolve. It loaded it. I'm like, that's awesome. Hit play. It played it. And I'm like. This is going to be great. I'm going to tell people all, and why haven't you brought this up? And, you know, what's it been like five months? Because <laughs> then I went to scrub backwards through the video and DaVinci Resolve spite notes to the desktop. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was an alpha or a beta. <laughs> it still does it uh, yeah. on 18, still does it in beta, 19 oh, beta, okay. 4 or 3, mm -hmm. whichever it's on. So there is your warning. Now it doesn't do it in uh, KDN Live or OpenShot. So. No, that's and exciting. more than likely, that's what you're going to be using. You're not going to be using DaVinci Resolve anyway. I get yeah. it. So uh, there's your warning right there. If you do decide <laughs> to do that, if your production flow is OBS and you want to play around with that, keep that in mind. Uh, if you're going to be ingesting that directly into DaVinci Resolve, don't use that just yet. Hold off. Try it out. Let me know in the comments. Love your feedback. Speaking of that. We got to bounce out of here. We're just a little over time, but I think we managed to squeeze it all in. Do you Yay, like the show? Ben. A lot of people, <laughs> for whatever reason, that YouTube algorithm after like 14 years is like, hey, you're doing a show. We get yeah. pretty good content, <laughs> don't you? We're, we're going to start telling people and we're going to like, you know, suggest it to people. I'm like, now? Finally? Finally, yeah. <laughs> you, you're going to do that. So we're getting a bunch of new subscribers, a bunch of new faces showing up. I always like to remind everybody, if you want to support what we're doing, it's easy to do. You go to the web zone or you click the link in the video description. It's right there. We have a Patreon. That's how we fund everything. So if you want to get into our Discord, you want to get the live and uncut versions of this show and a bunch of little bonus things, access to our um, track media server if you want to get into that mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm cautious to tell people about that because i don't want you to get addicted and uh a bunch mm -hmm. of other great things well, of course we have libra pay paypal and uh amazon wish list if you want to send something in for any host uh or just the studio because the studio is a host somehow and uh yeah. an amazon storefront humble affiliate all that fun stuff and a big thank you to everybody making this possible
no mattress ads, as I'd like to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were debating about doing a Microsoft. We've said on Linux Gamecast since the beginning, we'll only accept advertising from Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that would be delicious. But that I don't think Microsoft is ever going to cut any type of check. But it is uh, very, you know, something I'm proud of that we've been able to do this for so long without having to worry. Because this is something I have to think about with um, interfacing Linux because I've already gotten the offers. After they've seen uh, one video with 20,000 views, one video with 10,000 views, mm -hmm. brands are showing up. I'm getting those emails. And they're like, hey, right. would you be interested in doing a sponsored deal in this? And I'm like, not really. Not really. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, I'm leaving money on the table, but you can't do an honest thing like that. And like, oh, would you like a review? You know, you can send me something. I don't know if I'm going to send it back. Probably not. I might do a review. I don't like having to worry about that. And even though you might not agree with what we're saying, you know, we truly believe it. Well, thanks again, to each and every one of you out there so much that we're going to put your names in the credits. How about that? Yeah. Uh, Let's read off our, all our beautiful patrons. Oh, Norse Ranger. He resubbed uh, for 23 months. Thank you, Norse Ranger. North Ranger. We got our, our advisors. And one is our Theron, that's in chat. We have our Chicago Kids pe Kicks people. We have our Sea Monsters, Dirty Dean, DeCresney, our Death Notes, Casey Clism, Swine, Piper, Oil of Hope, Delaud, our Chairlings, Craig Hibbard, Douglas Hitchcock, Thomas Martin. And too many for me to name in one city. So I try and move around the names <laughs> to eventually get them all in there. One day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody have a great rest of your week if you're listening later get a chance come watch us live we do this at 3 p.m eastern on twitch mm -hmm. or wherever you're listening to drop us yeah. a note let us know what you think what are you up to what are you doing like <laughs> all right yes Bye, please <laughs>